Hello students, welcome to the lecture for Chapter 5, The Search for the Causes of Periodontal Disease. Epidemiology is a study of the health and disease within the total population rather than an individual, and it includes the risk factors that influence health and disease. Risk factors are factors that increase an individual's susceptibility to a disease. Epidemiologists strive to identify the risk factors associated with a disease. Identification of risk factors can lead to theories of the cause of a disease and treatment standards for that disease. Some examples of risk factors are heredity, gender, physical environment, systemic factors, socioeconomic status, and personal behavior. A large percentage of the adult population has periodontal disease. Epidemiologic research provides current information about the methods and behaviors successful in treating periodontal disease and preventing periodontal disease. Epidemiologists study periodontal disease to determine its occurrence in the population and to identify risk factors for periodontal disease. This diagram illustrates the types of questions asked by epidemiologists when studying periodontal disease. It is found on page 82 and it is labeled figured 5.1. Why does one part of the population have less periodontal disease than another? What genetic characteristics does the population have to increase their risk for periodontal disease? What is the cause of periodontal disease? How prevalent is periodontal disease in the population? What lifestyle behaviors does the population have to increase the risk for periodontal disease? Disease prevalence. Disease prevalence is the number of all cases of a disease, both old and new, that are identified in a specific population at a given point in time. For example, cancer prevalence is defined as the total number of people living with cancer at any point in time. It includes both people diagnosed with cancer in the past who are still alive, as well as people recently diagnosed. Incidence is the number of new disease cases in a population that occur over a period of time. For example, Cancer incidence is the number of new cases of cancer diagnosed in one year. The prevalence of periodontal disease in the adult population is determined by performing clinical examinations on cross-sections of groups using indices. Here is an example of commonly used periodontal indices, CPITN, Community and Periodontal Index of Treatment Needs, EIBI, Eastman Interdental Bleeding Index, GBI, Gingival Bleeding Index, GI, Gingival Index, PSR, Periodontal Screening and Recording. This diagram shows the prevalence of periodontal disease in various age groups. Notice that it goes from 1% at the ages of 14 to 17, all the way to 90% in patients of ages 45 to 80. Certain variables are associated with the prevalence of disease. Some of these are gender, educational level, socioeconomic status, age, and access to dental care. Males have a greater prevalence and severity of periodontal disease than females. There is a greater incidence of periodontal disease in individuals with lower levels of education. There is a greater incidence of periodontal disease in individuals with lower levels of income. Underdeveloped countries have a higher incidence of chronic periodontitis. Severity of periodontal disease increases with age. As an individual lives longer, the chances increase that he or she will be exposed to additional risk factors for periodontal disease such as systemic illness, medications, 
and stress. Individuals who desire or need dental care may not have access to care. Examples of barriers to dental care include transportation to a dental office and the financial expense of dental care. It is easier to evaluate a population for caries than for periodontal disease. Measuring caries is much more objective. Development and disease progression is well known. Development and disease progression involves only the tooth structure. Evaluation of periodontal disease is less specific. Periodontal disease involves hard and soft tissues. There are multiple variables to consider, some of which are tissue color changes and swelling, loss of bone and supportive structures, the degree of bleeding, probing depths. The research shows that periodontal disease is one of the most widespread diseases in adults. Most individuals who have periodontal disease do not know that they have it. Periodontal disease is the leading cause of tooth loss in adults older than 45 years. This diagram shows the prevalence of loss of attachment of 4 millimeters or more by age and race slash ethnicity. This diagram of tooth loss in adults shows that by age 60 to 69, less than half of all adults in the United States have retained 21 or more teeth. Control and progression of periodontal disease. The calculus theory states that the disease was caused solely by calculus. It recommended to see patients twice a year and have them brush three times per day. The nonspecific plaque theory stated that bacterial plaque causes periodontal disease and we should see the patients two to three times a year and floss in addition to brushing. The bacterial plaque specificity theory states that all plaque is not the same. The focus is on the composition of the plaque, and we should see the patient two to three times a year. The patient is informed that self-care can prevent and control the disease process. The host bacterial interaction theory states that interaction of the host with the bacteria is what's important. Maintenance appointments are scheduled as often as necessary, and the patient is not blamed if the disease does not arrest. The continuous progressive theory states that periodontal disease progresses throughout the mouth in a slow and constant rate over time. It is not an accurate reflection of the disease. The intermittent progressive theories include intermittent disease progression, which means that periods of disease activity and periods of inactivity occur during the time of disease. Susceptibility to periodontal disease varies greatly from person to person. The random burst theory states that short periods of destruction and short periods of inactivity occur and that these periods last from four to seven months. The asynchronous multiple burst theory states that multiple bursts of disease activity are followed by an indefinite period of remission. Risk factors can either be local and acquired or systemic. Among the local and acquired are dental plaque biofilm, oral conditions, and cigarette smoking. This concludes the lecture for Chapter 5.